Brexit if and when the EU negotiator reports that decisive progress has been made. And we should be clear that, as for now, not enough progress has been made. As there is a lot of speculation about the length of the transition period once the UK leaves the EU, let me say this. The issue of the length of the transition period was not discussed among the, 20, the, the EU 27 leaders yesterday. But let me recall that in uh, her Florence speech in September 2017, Prime Minister May proposed a transition period of around two years, and the EU accepted this proposal unanimously. Therefore, if the UK decided that an extension of the transition period would be helpful to reach a deal, I am sure that the leaders would be ready, ready to consider it positively. Today we also discussed migration and we confirmed our objective to stop the flow of illegal migration. We noted in particular the need to closely watch the situation in the Western Mediterranean and in this context to strengthen our cooperation with Morocco, as recommended by Prime Minister Sanchez. Following our discussion in Salzburg, we also agreed conclusions on strengthening our internal security. Let me mention one issue specifically. In light of the recent hostile cyber attack carried out against the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, the European Council calls for measures to combat illegal cyber activities. In this context, we ask ministers to work on a sanctions regime that will be specific to cyber attacks. Such a regime should help to protect our citizens, companies and institutions from all kinds of cyber security threats. Finally, on today's Euro Summit, the aim was to assess the state of play of the EMU reform and to keep up the momentum for change. We agreed that we need to accelerate the technical work. We want to get an agreement on the banking union and the ESM in December. I hope our discussion today will inspire the Eurogroup to act more dynamically. Thank you. Thank you. And now the President of the European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker. Oui, uh, bonjour. Um, je voudrais peut-être vous parler plutôt du sommet de l'euro, puisque Donald a présenté en détail les autres sujets qui figuraient à l'ordre du jour. Sur l'euro, nous sommes tombés d'accord, pas pour la première fois, qu'il faudrait que nous complétions l'union bancaire, l'union des marchés des capitaux, que nous adoptions un calendrier pour ce qui est de l'examen et de l'adoption de, euh, de la garantie de dépôt partout en Europe. Nous avons brièvement examiné, mais brièvement, les questions budgétaires qui font l'actualité de ce jour. Le Premier ministre italien a présenté la situation italienne avec talent et avec verf. Nous n'avons pas réagi à son exposé puisque nous sommes en train d'examiner le projet de budget tel qu'il nous fut transmis par les autorités italiennes avant-hier. Sur ce, je voudrais dire que nous ne nourrissons aucune espèce de préjugé négatif à l'égard de l'Italie, le budget italien sera examiné avec la même rigueur et avec la même souplesse que nous examinons les autres projets de budget qui nous ont été adressés. Je voulais vous dire qu'il y a quatre, cinq, six pays qui donnent lieu à nous adresser au gouvernement de ces pays respectifs pour demander des informations supplémentaires. Mais j'ai lu, je crois, sur l'agence belga ce matin, que la Commission s'apprêterait à rejeter le budget belge. J'ai pu dire au Premier ministre belge hier soir que le budget belge ne nous posait pas un énorme problème, ni même un grand problème, ni même un problème, mais que nous avons des questions supplémentaires à poser au gouvernement Belge. Donc euh, tous ceux qui, dans une excitation euh, presque incompréhensible, se sont penchés sur le cas belge euh, ce matin, ministres compris, euh, s'excitent sur des sujets où il n'y a pas lieu de s'exciter. 
Il faut toujours savoir gérer ces excitations. Deux, euh, nous avons discuté euh, les perspectives financières 21-27 euh, euh, et j'ai été heureux de constater qu'aucun Premier ministre, ni aucune chancelière, ni aucune euh, figure dominante dirigeante de l'Europe a dit qu'il faudrait adopter les perspectives financières après les élections européennes. J'avais dit, comme je l'ai déjà fait plusieurs fois, que le fait qu'il y ait des élections européennes en mai ne, ne reflète pas l'état de crise de l'Europe, des élections en Europe, dans un pays, c'est ce qu'il y a de plus normal. Donc ce n'est pas un, un symptôme de crise et donc on peut décider jusqu'au dernier jour et je compte bien insister auprès de nos collègues au Conseil européen pour qu'une bonne décision budgétaire soit prise avant les élections européennes. Merci. Je, je, je vois que vous êtes scandalisé par le fait que je, je, que je sais faire des propos brefs. Thank you. I now open the floor for your questions. The lady in blue, please. And we start with the lady in blue. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Catherine Fjord, EU reporter. Uh, President Juncker, you said that you know, journalists get a bit overexcited and report no, no, things. No, no, <laughs> no. No? No, no, no. But um, do ministers. you think... I said ministers. Ministers, oh, sorry, apologies. Um, journalists are never excited. <laughs> they are bringing other people to be excited. Okay, okay. Well, I hope I'm doing so, my job there. But uh, c can you say whether... Um, you, is there a lack of urgency among the heads of government about uh, deepening the, the economic and monetary union? Do you think that progress will only be made if we are faced with a crisis? Do we have to wait for that to happen before the EMU is completed? We have, as a Commission, presented 40 proposals concerning the deepening of the economic and monetary union, seven, six or seven out of them have been adopted, so there is a lot of work uh, to be done. And uh, I hope that ministers uh, will do so in the next coming uh, months. There is no sense, of, uh, no sense of urgency, but it's urgent. Next one, Giovanni. Uh, yes, President, Giovanni De Re from the Italian newspaper Avenire. Um, yesterday, you said, um, speaking to some of my audiovisual colleagues, that uh, you cannot accept everything from Italy, otherwise other member states would be very angry at you. Uh, was I wanted to know whether you found in this summit uh, this, this kind of support or that uh, you should not be too indulgent with Italy. Thanks. I have to repeat that we didn't discuss in depth the Italian uh, draft budget. That was not the day and not the room and not the meeting uh, for doing so. But I know from the past that the Commission has always been accused for having been too generous when it came to Italian budgets. I'm not saying that we were generous, but we have introduced in the implementation reading of the Growth and Stability Pact some elements of flexibility. Italy having been the only country for having used all the flexibility instruments we have introduced since we are uh, since we started as a as a commission and so I know and I had some colleagues on the phone that they don't want us to add flexibilities to flexi to already existing uh, flexibilities and that's by the way not our intention to uh, to behave that way around. Italy was able to spend over the last three years 30 billion euros more without a uh, sanction uh, being taken under the empire, like the French are saying, of the stability pact. So we were very kind, gentle, positive when it came uh, to Italy, because Italy is Italy. Thank you. And the next question goes to the lady in the second row. The very first. Thank you. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, Katia Adler, uh, BBC. Um, President Juncker, President Tusk. Um, you were mentioning there, President Tusk, about the possibility of uh, extending the transition period. 
could there therein be found the solution to the Irish border issue? Uh, if yes, is that because there's traction now with the idea of having a temporary customs union for all of the United Kingdom? And if yes, forgive me, does, will that appear in the withdrawal agreement and would that supersede then uh, the Northern Ireland specific backstop? Sorry for that. <laughs> the multi-layers. Thank you. It's, it's for sure for Jean-Claude. It's, it's, for me, it was too complex, you know. It's, uh... <laughs> for me, it's too easy. <laughs> no, this prolongation of the transitional period probably will, will happen. That's a good idea. It's not the best idea the two of us we had, but I think that this is giving us some room to, the, to prepare the... Um, uh, future relation in, in the best way uh, possible. And uh, I'm, I'm convinced uh, that under the leadership of Donald, we'll find a deal with Britain. My working assumption is not that we will have a no deal. A no deal would be dangerous and for Britain and for the European Union. And instead of describing the differences, divergences we have, we have to concentrate and to focus on the large number of uh, agreements we have, and we'll add to this large number of agreements the two, three missing uh, elements. It will be done. Thank you. And one more question to Lawrence. Whether there is a possibility that the Northern Ireland specific backstop could be replaced with the idea of, of a UK wide customs union. Sorry to. We, madam, we are not in a negotiation room here. My feel, sorry, maybe it's too general, and, uh, but uh, what I can say today is that we are in a much better mood than after Salzburg. And what I feel today is that we are closer to, to the final um, solutions and, and, and uh, the deal. But it's maybe more emotional impression than rational one, but as you know, emotions matter also in politics. Thanks. Lawrence Norman of the uh, Wall Street Journal. Um, two questions, two questions if I may, one to each of you. Um, for Mr. Tusk, if indeed there is an extension of the transition, is it clear to you that Britain would have to make additional payments to the EU budget. And for Mr. Juncker, um, US Commerce Secretary Ross surprised everyone yesterday by saying that President Trump's patience is not limit unlimited when it comes to trade talks with Europe. Um, and he was suggesting that Europe is dragging its feet over the talks. When you left the White House meeting with Mr. Trump in July, did you feel that at this stage, at this point now, we would be in serious negotiations? And whose fault is it if the talks are moving slowly? As, as I mentioned just in my, my um, introduction, the length of the transition period was not discussed among the EU27. Uh, yesterday, and I don't want to be a part of uh, the speculations. I had a meeting with uh, President Trump uh, by the end of July, and what we have agreed and what the two of us are committed to uh, will be done. Okay. One more. One more. Could I add a word, Donald, because we discussed Africa this morning, yes. too. That was an important uh, element of our debates. I, I don't think that you mentioned it. Morocco. In Morocco, yeah. yeah, yeah but it... I was... Yeah, Morocco is Africa, yeah. Yes. North Africa. Uh, but it was not only about Morocco. I, I wanted to say, as I did during the uh, speech on the State of the Union, that this is not about migration. We want a fair equal partnership with uh, the African continent because we do think that this will be one of the main um, problems we have to, to, uh, to share together with the, with the Africans. I will visit Tunisia later this month and I am intending to, to visit Morocco in January 
uh, February. So we are very close to the, to, to the concerns of uh, the Africans. But I wanted to say, don't make the mistake to think that this is only about migration. We have this external uh, investment program. Uh, we have this African a trust fund, and we have to build a stronger economic relation with our African friends. It's not only about migration. Thank you. We we'll have one last question before the answer. Catherine Chatignot, Les Echos. Monsieur Juncker, vous avez évoqué vous êtes où, ici. Ah, oui. Vous avez évoqué tout à l'heure la possibilité d'un accord d'ici la fin de l'année sur l'union bancaire et le mécanisme européen de stabilité. Vous n'avez pas parlé du budget de la zone euro. Est-ce que ça veut dire que ce projet est abandonné ou, ou prématuré Non. J'avais proposé, je crois, l'année passée dans le discours sur l'état de l'Union, qu'il faudrait que dans le cadre du budget général de l'Union européenne, nous dédions quelques lignes bien remplies à la zone euro, qu'on appelle ça budget euro, ou ligne, ligne spécifique dédiée à la zone euro, peu importe, mais sur ce point, le travail continue. Non, cette idée n'est pas abandonnée. Thank you very much. This concludes the press conference. Council on Brexit if and when the EU negotiator reports in May. As there is a lot of